The single most important proposition in economic theory is that competitive markets do a good job of allocating resources. A market exists whenever suppliers and consumers interact to exchange goods and services. Where and whenever suppliers offer something to buyers who have something to offer in return, a market exists. Thus, a market can take many forms, from brick and mortar stores, to sidewalk peddlers, to virtual markets on the internet. No matter what the form, they all operate under the principle of supply and demand. So understanding these principles enables you to understand and even anticipate important economic changes, such as changing food and gasoline prices. Life will be much more explainable and less mysterious. First, demand. The demand curve relates various amounts of a good or service that consumers are willing and able to purchase at various prices during a given period, ceteris paribus. There are six factors that determine our demand for a product. The goods own price determines what we will be giving up to buy this thing. Tastes, our personal subjective preferences, bright colored clothes or earth tones, rock and roll or rap, spicy or bland food. Income, how much money do we have to spend? The price of substitutes. What does it cost to get the utility in another way? The price of compliments. What do we need to spend for accessories that make this thing more useful? Cream for our coffee, gas for our car. And expectations. Do we expect prices to change in the future? If we expect higher prices down the road, we'll demand more now and stock up. If prices are going down, we might wait and buy it later. To simplify our function down to one based only on a good's own price, we'll need to assume away the other factors. Thus, setters paribus. All other things remain the same. Let's assume for the time being that none of the non-price factors will change. Tastes won't change, other prices won't change, our income won't change. Thus, the law of demand assumes that a negative relationship exists between a good's price and the quantity demanded. Or, as the price of something rises, less will be demanded. Conversely, falling prices increase the quantity demanded. The concept of diminishing margin utility explains why the quantity demanded is inversely related to the goods price. In economics, utility means that something has value. Having something is better than not having it. Also in economics, marginal means the next one, or the next unit. Margin utility, then, is the additional happiness you get if you get one more item. Diminishing means getting smaller. So diminishing margin utility means that as you obtain more of any one thing, the boost to your happiness gets smaller and smaller. Thus, for normal people, the first unit of something you own is more valuable than subsequent units. Therefore, we normally aren't willing to pay the same amount for all units. Having one pair of shoes is vitally important to most of us, but getting the 11th, 12th, or 200th pair isn't as important. The demand curve relates prices to quantity demanded. According to this curve, if the price is $4, then consumers in this market will demand two units total. If the price falls to $2, it becomes more attractive to us. So we move along the demand curve, increasing the quantity demanded to 4. Supply is the various amounts of a good or service that producers are willing and able to supply at various prices during a given period, ceteris paribus. Since suppliers produce things to make a profit, 
The factors that affect the supply curve are related to the cost of production and maximizing profits. The good zone price determines what will be earned by selling this thing. The cost of inputs to the production process is important because price minus cost equals profits. The higher the input cost, the lower the profits. Three, the efficiency of the technology used to transform the inputs into a finished good or service affects the output per unit of input. And last, the role of expectations in this case is the mirror image of their effect on demand. If they see higher prices coming, suppliers have an incentive to offer less now and hold back until prices are higher. If prices are going down, firms would like to offer all they can now before prices fall. Using the same Ceteris Paribus assumption, the law of supply assumes that a positive relationship exists between a goods price and the quantity supplied. Or, as the price goes up, more will be supplied. All businesses face short-run constraints that limit their ability to increase output. This means that producing greater quantities beyond a point leads to rising per unit costs. Since businesses only exist to earn a profit, they will only increase production if the price goes up enough to compensate for the rising costs. This is diminishing marginal product. As production increases, further increases become more expensive. The supply curve relates prices to quantity supplied. According to this curve, if the price is $2, suppliers will offer only two units. If the price rises to $4, more money can be made if more is offered. So we move up along the supply curve, increasing the quantity supplied to 4. Next, we'll bring supply and demand together to see how a market works.